didn't see anything because they blindfolded me right away. And now I had to sink into a pool full of insects. My biggest fear, I would definitely have a panic attack again. My heart was pounding, my legs were weak, but my classmates were holding my hands. God, was this really happening to me? I could feel the insect bodies crunching beneath me, and I could feel the maggots crushing under me, gritting my teeth. I tried hard not to scream, but when I felt the slimy worms touch me, I couldn't stand it. My head was spinning, my chest was tight, and I couldn't even move in fear. I was dying. And I just wanted to finally find friends. A couple of weeks ago, I transferred to a new school. And that happened because, to be honest, it's still hard for me to think about it. My friend Tracy died in a car accident. She was the only one I talked to. After her funeral, something strange started happening to me. Severe panic attacks. Sometimes I could faint out of the blue. I was literally going crazy with loneliness. I couldn't admit it to my parents. A long time ago, I had already asked them for help, but they reacted very sharply, and now they would put me in an asylum right away. I urgently needed to find some company to distract myself. I couldn't bear to be without Tracy, but they didn't want to accept me in the new class. One of the coolest companies was with Sam at the head, my classmate. Sam and his friends seemed very friendly, constantly having fun and going to joint parties. More than anything in the world, I would like to be among them right now. But when I tried to make friends with them, they just made fun of me. Sam said there was no way I'd fit in with them. He gave me a quizzical look. He was from a rich family, wore branded clothes, and clearly despised those who were poorer. And my family had never been well off. Despite this, I did not give up trying to make friends with Sam's company. I would treat them with something, then I would tell them the answers to the test. But in vain, I was almost desperate to find friends. Once, in biology class, we were studying insects. I panicked just from one picture. It became harder to breathe. I even felt dizzy. I'd been afraid of insects since childhood, but after Tracy was gone, it turned into some kind of phobia. And even the teacher paid attention to me. He asked me if I was alright. I replied in a choked voice that I just didn't like insects. I wished the lesson was over. I barely made it to the end, and then I ran out into the street. There wasn't enough air. Catching my breath, I was about to go back to class when Sam came up to me. I froze. What did he want from me? Make fun of me again? But Sam suddenly smiled amicably and said that he had been watching me for a long time and had decided that I would be accepted into the company. I couldn't believe what he was saying. What? Really? Sam continued. But first, you need to pass the initiation. I looked at him in dismay. What kind of initiation was this? He grinned and patted me on the shoulder. Nothing complicated. All you have to do is go down into the pool. Well, it was easy. I chuckled. I definitely know how to swim. But Sam's eyes flashed angrily into a pool filled with insects. I froze in horror, and Sam kept talking. They could only be friends with me if I could overcome my fear. And he just had a swimming pool at home. He would organize everything. Oh, what? The shock left me speechless. Yes, I really needed to get into the company. But to go down to the insects? I almost threw up at the very thought. A chill ran down my spine. No, no way. This was too much. I told Sam I wasn't going to be a part of this. And I turned around. No matter how difficult it was for me to be alone, I would never agree to go down to the insects. But the very next day at school, I regretted my decision. As soon as I walked into the classroom, everyone started calling me a coward, pointing and laughing. I think I was having another attack. Sam turned everyone against me. I tried to ignore it, but my classmates wouldn't leave me alone. They bullied me. They framed me during tests and locked me in the class. It only made me feel worse. My hands were shaking almost constantly now and my heart was pounding. I wish Tracy was here again. The loneliness made me want to climb the wall. I was trapped and cried all night. And in the morning, I looked terribly tired. No, that was enough. 
It couldn't go on like this. Loneliness and these damn panic attacks were much worse than fear. If I didn't communicate with anyone, I would just go crazy. This was my last chance to get into the company. So when I arrived at the school, I went straight to Sam and told him that I was willing to take his initiation. He exchanged glances with his friends and huh. grinned. Well, I'll see you at my house tomorrow night, he said. I was restless for a whole day. I was very scared. I was shaking most of the day, and no matter how much I tried to push my thoughts away, I could see a swimming pool filled with insects. Vile, slimy, buzzing. <sighs> what if I got really bad there? No. I had to do this for the company, and then everything would be fine. I would never be alone again. The next day, I went to Sam's house in advance. Everything clenched inside me from fear and terror. Was I going to have to stand in a pool with insects soon? Maybe. Hell with it. I wanted to run away and forget everything like a bad dream, but I forced myself to go inside. Sam met me on the doorstep with his friends. He was smiling and holding a rack in his hand. I frowned. What was that for? But he only waved his hand. This was part of the initiation. He immediately blindfolded me. I swallowed. Maybe it was ever easier that way. I wouldn't see those nasty wiggling bugs. Hell, the very thought of them made me sick. Sam and one of his friends took my hands and led me to the pool. I could feel my heart beating fast, my legs refusing to move. But I had no choice. This was the only way to make friends. I had to get over my fear. Sam helped me down into the pool. As soon as I felt the insects crunch beneath me, the maggots burst and a lump rose in my throat. No, I couldn't. Something slimy crawled up my leg and I got dizzy. That was enough. Get me out of here. The last thing I heard was Sam shouting something. My legs buckled. I think I was losing consciousness. When I came to, I immediately saw Sam and the guys from his company. They were all leaning over me, each trying to help me. Someone was splashing water on my face. Someone was holding my head. But Sam was the most worried. He was terribly pale. When he saw that I came to, he let out a sigh of relief and squeezed my hand. He said he was very glad I was okay. I was furious. You're the one who made me go down to the insects. Damn it. You knew I was scared to death of them. If it wasn't for you, I'd be fine. But Sam shook his head. There were no insects, he said. See for yourself. What? What's he talking about? I raised myself up on my elbows and saw the ill-fated pool. And I couldn't believe my eyes. The pool was filled to the brim with grapes and marmalade worms. So I thought they were the nasty maggots? And the bugs that crunched under my feet were just plain popcorn. So this was all just my imagination? The mixed emotions made me cry. I fainted because of the marmalade. It was ridiculous. I was overwhelmed with resentment. Sobbing, I blurted out. You've arranged this to make fun of me. But Sam shook his head again. It turned out that he only wanted to help me overcome my fear. He used to have the same phobia. He fainted even from the sight of a worm, but Sam managed to overcome it. And now he just wanted to help me not to be afraid to. But he didn't expect that I would react so sharply. He was very worried about me. Sam smiled faintly and tried to apologize. He said I was definitely accepted into the company now. And no more bugs. A couple of days ago, I wanted to hear it. But I didn't feel anything right now. Only anger and resentment. I knew how wrong I'd been about Sam and his company. And for the sake of these idiots, I was ready to swim with bugs. I couldn't believe it. Was I really that stupid? I stood up abruptly, waving away the help. Sam stared at me in surprise. I don't need such friends. I turned and headed for the exit. Sam was taken aback for a second, and then he started to catch up with me and mumble some apologies. But I was adamant. When I finally left the house, I breathed a sigh of relief. Did I really think these guys could replace Tracy for me? It made me laugh. I was just approaching my house when I suddenly felt something on my hand. I lowered my gaze. I froze for a second. There was a big spider on my arm. Probably it fell on me from a tree while I was walking. I swallowed, and suddenly I realized that I wasn't afraid of it. 
This stupid initiation really helped me get rid of my phobia and eternal anxiety. I calmly shook off the spider and headed home, of course. This did not justify Sam and his friends, but now I finally felt strong. I understood that I could handle all the difficulties on my own. And I knew that Tracy would be proud of me. Did you like the video? Subscribe and like it. Support the channel. Thank you. That day I climbed this mountain shivering with cold, but here at last was the shaman's cave. I stepped into total darkness, then I noticed shadows moving on the wall around the bend and screams coming from inside. Probably, many people in my place would be scared, but not me. I didn't feel fear since I was a child. Perhaps this was some kind of anomaly or curse. That's why I decided to go to a shaman. I took a step inside and saw a bonfire in front of me. And here was the shaman himself. His face was covered with the mask of the skull of a sheep. Cool. I moved closer and said I wanted to learn how to feel fear. But suddenly he silenced me with a gesture. He began to whisper a spell. I chuckled. Well, well, let's see what happens next. I sat down on the floor. Suddenly my vision went dark. And then I fainted. I woke up from the roar of the engine. Where was I? Was this my street? But I was at the shaman's. How did I get here? My heart was pounding. A bird screamed nearby. And I jerked in surprise. I looked around in panic. And again a sharp noise. I jumped. A bus whizzed by. There was danger at every step. And then I had a terrible idea. It seemed that the shaman had fulfilled my request. And now I was afraid of everything. Realizing this, I suddenly felt dizzy and fainted again. It all started a long time ago. Since childhood, I had not felt fear. I could easily pet a tiger in the circus or pull a snake by the tail and was the first to jump into the lake from the top of a tree. I wish my mother had seen my exploits. She hadn't been out of the house for years after her legs gave out. Over time, I realized I could earn good money on my fearlessness and became a stuntman. And then a couple of months ago, I was invited to star in a cool action movie. According to the scenario, I had to drive a few meters on a burning motorcycle and then jump from the bridge into the river. I had never felt fear. So I easily performed this trick. And then I noticed a guy who was looking at me with both horror and delight. I chuckled. One more boy was in shock, but when he got closer, it turned out to be Gabe the screenwriter of the movie. Wow. I wanted to meet him ever since I had read the script. It was clear that the author loved risk and new sensations. I was sure we had a lot in common. Embarrassed. Gabe said that it was only because of my tricks that this movie was so interesting. You don't seem to be afraid of anything at all. He said. I laughed. From that day on, we chatted for hours after filming. Gabe moved to the city recently, and I became his first friend here. So when my friends invited me to go skiing in the mountains after the shooting, I invited Gabe. He agreed, but said he didn't really like skiing. Come on, it's fun. As soon as we arrived, one of my friends handed Gabe the skis. But he only repeated that he did not like to ski. Everyone rushed to convince him, but he was so stubborn. My friends said that they were going skiing, and we could join them if we wanted. Damn it, Gabe, let's go already. But Gabe said abruptly that he would wait for me here. Hey, what's with you? Gabe suddenly looked down and blurted out that he was just really scared. Oh, really? It couldn't be. His scripts were filled with extreme stuff. Gabe, with a sad smile, said that he would have died of fear in the plays of his heroes, and then he added that I wouldn't understand anyway. Well, whatever you want. Sit here alone if you like. I quickly left the house because I needed to catch up with my friends, but the conversation with Gabe never left my mind. I really didn't know what it felt like to be afraid. And suddenly I saw an ad on a tree. A mountain shaman will help with any problem. I didn't usually believe in this, but for some reason, it worked this time and I was interested. And then I went to the address that was specified. But after I got to the cave and the shaman cast a spell, I was afraid of everything. Well, you remember, I fainted twice and now I was awake and sitting in front of my own house. And everything scared me. I had to collect my thoughts. Shuddering at every sound, I went home. I would sleep it off and it would pass. The next day, I arrived on the set. I thought the panic attack was over. According to the script, I had to run through a burning house. Usually we shot this from the first take. I was a little uneasy. 
What if I got scared and couldn't do the trick? But I reassured myself this was nonsense and I was a professional. The shooting started, but then I was paralyzed. I couldn't even get close to the fiery abyss. The director got angry and immediately ordered, second take, action. But I felt numb. Hell, but I never had problems with scenes like this. With irritation, the director shouted to bring a replacement. The team could no longer wait. How? A new wave of horror washed over me. Did I just get taken off the project? Then someone put an arm around my shoulders and I jumped in fright. Gabe? He noticed with concern that I looked tired. And suddenly he said that he wanted to support me. He would overcome his fear and go skiing with me. Oh no, just thinking about the descent made my head spin. I just hoped Gabe would get cold feet again and everything would be fine. However, when we were on the mountain, Gabe immediately put on his skis. And then, shouting that it was for my sake, he rushed down. I closed my eyes. God, why take such a risk? And then Gabe was gone. Oh no, I thought about running for help. But a couple of minutes later, I saw him. Gabe was coming up. He looked so happy. I complimented him on his courage. Gabe suggested we ski together, and my stomach went cold. But suddenly a crowd of teenagers ran up to us. They vied with each other to admire me. I was so cool in all the movies, and they started asking me to show them a trick. For example, I could ski on the most dangerous skiing run. I shivered. I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of the fans. Flustered, I muttered that I wasn't in the mood. But then one of them shouted at me not to be silly and pushed me. Oh dear. I was screaming and skiing down a steep slope at breakneck speed when I suddenly saw a rock in the middle of the run. I swerved sharply to the side and immediately crashed into a tree. I opened my eyes a crack. God, there was a cliff nearby. Okay, I needed to get out of here carefully. I let out of breath as I heard the crunch of branches behind. Finally, I need some help. Suddenly, there was a roar. A huge bear came out of the bushes. I saw his fangs and started running. This was the end. Then I heard a noise from the other side. The bear paused and turned at the sound. This way. Came from behind the tree. This was Gabe. He jumped out and started waving his arms. The bear leaned toward him. And then Gabe ran as fast as he could up the slope. I looked at it all with horror. The bear could not get on the rock and lazily wandered somewhere in the direction of the forest. I couldn't believe it was alright. Gabe, you saved me. Gabe put his arm around me and offered me a break from everything. Yes, I needed it now. We went to a cafe and I couldn't stop thanking Gabe for his courage. How did you even get so close to the bear? Gabe replied that his fear for me was stronger than his fear for his own life. And then cautiously, he asked me what had happened to me. Miss Dauntless. My eyes filled with tears. But Gabe touched my arm and told me I could trust him. I exhaled and told Gabe about the shaman. I added that even a coward like he, Gabe, was now braver than me. Gabe looked at me in surprise, then got up and left without a word. Gabe, stop. That's not what I meant. I ran after him, and I saw him getting on the bus. Heck, I did not have time. I would wait for the next one, and then I would go home and explain everything to him. Finally, the bus arrived. I sat down across from the little girl. She suddenly smiled, and I felt better. I would fix it and apologize to Gabe. Then I heard a strange knock. It sounded like a faulty engine. My hands were already shaking, but I tried to calm down. The driver said that now we would go to the white road and he would see what happened. Suddenly, the bus seemed to have rocked. God, the road was full of holes. The bus ran into an icy snowdrift and overturned. People began to break the windows. They were screaming for help. Some were even praying. And I just numb with fear. And then I looked at the little girl. She was spinned down by the chair and couldn't get free. My heart sank. A terrible picture appeared in my head. My parents and I were in the car. I was playing with a doll. When suddenly a sharp blow, the car turned over. Then I felt fear. My mom tried to pull me out of the car, but her legs gave out. We all almost died that day. The strong smell of smoke brought me back to reality. The bus started burning. Everyone was out now, except for me and this little girl. I had to save her. I crawled over to her. I pushed back the arm of the chair with force. And the girl gripped me tightly, holding her in my arms. I climbed over the broken glass and only now could I catch my breath. 
We were recovering when I noticed the car with flashing lights in the distance. Were we saved? I couldn't calm down in the car. I felt more helpless than ever. How could I live with this? We were driving in a town and I saw Gabe at the bus stop. Please stop! When I got out, Gabe saw me and immediately rushed to hug me. It turned out that he had learned about the accident from the news. Gabe said he wouldn't leave me alone now. I was so grateful for his care and kindness. We turned a corner and suddenly I couldn't believe it. Shaman's Gabe? I was numb, but Gabe said this was my chance to fix it. After that, he pulled me inside. We went in and I got goosebumps. It was so cold, dark, and scary. But I needed to find the shaman who caused my life to go wrong at all costs. I saw him with a tambourine in the depths of the cave and immediately shouted for him to return my fearlessness to me. However, this old man only smiled slightly. What did it mean? I was furious. But the shaman said he hadn't changed anything about me. He just reminded me of who I really was. The shaman came closer and said that it was okay to be afraid, and I needed to learn to control my fears rather than seek fearlessness. Then I would get my job back and my friends back, and now a loving man would help me with this, because he had already learned this. I looked at Gabe and smiled. I felt like I was filling up with new strength. I thanked the shaman and Gabe and I left the cave. Today I realized that the real fearlessness is to look into the eyes of your own fears. Did you like the video? Subscribe and like it. Support the channel. Thank you.